and welcome to the Extra Edge, a sports analytics podcast powered by Connexon Sports. Please like and subscribe on any and all of the platforms you prefer to listen to your podcast. I'm Dave Grinjinski, and today we're talking with Rick Bonvas, who is the strength and conditioning coach for Heroes Den Bosch, a Dutch professional basketball club based in the Netherlands and playing in the B-Next League. Coach, first of all, let me thank you for joining us here on The Extra Edge. Thanks for having me, Dave. Well, Coach, you've been there since 2019, and you're, you're, you're a very interesting guest to have because you get to see performance and the injury side of things. And so we're going to get into that a little bit. But since you've been there, you've won the Dutch National Championship, the Dutch Super Cup, and this year's Dutch Cup which Heroes has now won eight times. And on top of that, you've got 17 national championships over there. And on this is where I start to wonder, how much did the data play a role in all of this success? And so on this podcast, we talk about data, insights, and actions. And so let's talk about the data first, Coach. When did you start using data and why? Uh, we started it, I would say, uh, over a year ago. So actually, we had a trial with Kinexon first. Uh, I think it was the last three months or so of, of the of last season. And um, I heard from Kinexon from uh, my colleagues of the who work with the national team, and they've been working with Kinexon for a while, and they really liked it. And so I've been talking to the uh, the people there, and they say that the data really helps them. And so this is how I first got to know Kinexon. And then we just reached out and we just had Kinex on. Uh, we, we had it for a while, I would say like two or three months or so. And then in the summer, we, we as an organization made the decision to really uh, yeah, get, get to work with Kinex on. So now it's our first full year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. It's, uh, in the beginning, it was, you know, it was quite a lot of like, uh, learning how to interpret the data and everything. But we, we, get, we have good help. And I feel like we right now we're at a point where we know... Uh, we know what we want from data, uh, and and it really helps us in our our planning and and also in the in the return to play. But we're going to talk to that uh, about that in a bit. But uh, yeah, both uh, both sides, it's it's helping us for sure. Now, how about you personally? When did when did you personally? Uh, when were you exposed to data? Was it as a player? Were you coaching when when all of this talk about you know performance metrics and you know and this whole new side of sports uh, kind of came to light? I guess it was, I was working in field hockey before I worked, uh, before I started working uh, with a basketball team. And in the Netherlands, field hockey is, is pretty big. And I was working with a team and they did a lot with heart rate. And they, they had a guy sitting on the on the sideline, always seeing all the heart rate data. And But at the time, that is, I think, like eight, nine years ago, like it wasn't that that good actually you know so there was a lot of times where the heart rate didn't really uh it was, wasn't really working or there were some issues there but that was the first time i would really see it and would really see a team work with it and see coaches trying to uh, get get it uh get it to work and everything but i think when i was when i was doing my masters and there was a lot of guest uh speakers from all different sorts of clubs and they told me about how they use their data at big organizations like uh, Ajax, uh, the football club, Feyenoord football club. Uh, that's uh, probably the first time I really saw it, and I was really intrigued and really thought like, "Hey, this is this is actually pretty cool and, and can really help us." Well, the other thing too, you know, I mean, Heroes is winning. You're, you guys are winning championships. You're winning league titles. You're you're doing everything right. But then, I mean, you've only been using basketball data with us for for a year. How did that conversation go from from the time you were there in 2019? I, you know, and and I know th- there is a lot of pride with this organization. Is it just that desire to just keep on winning and looking for that extra edge? Is that where the conversation started with Heroes? Yeah, for sure. Keep on winning. That's that's obviously priority number one, number one. But I feel like our organization is also one that wants to. I guess I would say lead a little bit or wants to have like, hey, we, we have the feeling that it's going this direction and we're going to be the first one to, to go there or that I feel like that's also helping. Uh, but actually, like the, the main thing uh, is just a coach. You know, we have a coach who's really into it, who really wants uh, wants to work with the data. So 
you know, if coach says to the organization, "Hey, we got to do this," then then that's you know, then it's easier for 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 me uh, to get that, to get it. So, I would say pride in the organization, but for sure also a coach that that really wants it. Yeah, pioneers. We like to hear that because uh, I mean, that's what we need. And so you got you're using a, an IMU system, correct? And can you talk a little bit about that and what types of metrics you're looking at? Yeah, sure. Um, we we got the IMU because uh, you know for us the most important uh, thing. Now, actually, let me rephrase it. I think we got the we, the, the way we work with it is uh, we collect the data from every practice in the game, of course. And uh, what we do is we can track live data, but actually it's it's not that convenient in our situation with with me not being there every practice. So what we uh, oftentimes do is just we put the tags in just pre-practice. Uh, usually it's it's one of the the rookies who brings the tray with the tags to the practice court. Then the guys get it and you know they put it in the in the shorts. We got the pockets. We don't got the the things here, but we got the pockets, and I really like that. Um, then they, they put them in there, they practice after practice. One of the assistant coaches, uh, while the guys are stretching, gets all the, the tags in, connects it to the laptop. And then, you know, it's, uh, then I can log in either from home or at the, the laptop at the office and just get the data. Uh, and then of course, there are so many met metrics we can have a look at, but, uh, we decided uh, as we coach and I to really have a look uh, at the ac accumulated acceleration load. So sort of like a number that that puts all the stuff together, and we know that it's not perfect, but we know that that's a number that gives us a, a good idea of how intense the practice was. And uh, I would say that that number is the first number that that I'll tell coach like, hey, it was this high, and then we know like, hey, that was what we're aiming for, or ooh, that was a little bit high, or, and then we know what we need to do the, the day after to make sure that the, the week of the load is as perfect as we want it. Well, and one of the advantages of the IMU is you could take it wherever you need to go. You can take it on the road, right? You can you can you can set it up, you know, for any any game or practice. So, did it take a little bit of time to to kind of settle on uh, when it comes to AAL? Did it to, to kind of settle on your number when you started comparing games to practices? Mm, actually, it was the, the 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 collecting. It was pretty easy, but it was more like uh, finding out. So uh, yeah, so we we have a good idea of how how intense a game is. So we played Champions League qualification. We know how intense that is. We played FIBA Europe Cup. We know how, how intense that is. We also played against some better opponents or or maybe a little bit less opponents. So we we have a broad idea about what the data does and how intense a game is. Um, and the funny thing is when we started looking at the practices and really divided in phases to really see like how much is a warm up, how much is a a rebounding drill how much is a shooting drill and then we we got in really when we make the deep dive into the data we saw that sometimes a rebounding drill is not as high as we would anticipate because the accumulated acceleration load can really can't um, uh, measure like how hard you're pushing and shoving so there are some things that you really need to consider but uh, usually you can just like that number is 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 very good at just saying how intense it was so if if I not ask the guys how intense it was and I just look at the data, I, I exactly know like this is coach was rough on him today. I, I I can just say that. How did the players? Uh, did they accept this right away? Do they know? I mean, okay, you know, everybody's doing data. You know, did, did they just accept it or did did you have to convince them a little bit uh, to do it? Yeah, it's uh, some of the guys already knew it from the Dutch national team. Uh, and they were very happy because over there they they used to wear it like in these sport bra type of so they were very happy that we had the pockets so um i would say half of the guys probably already was familiar with with collecting data the other half wasn't or was not not to this level and so in the preseason i, I gave a presentation i always do that where I, I i tell some stuff what we do and about the organization and about the strength and conditioning and all of that and then I, t I told the guys like, hey, and the collecting data is also to help you guys. So I can tell coach like, hey, uh, don't go too hard or today should be a little, little bit of a low day or whatever. And you see the guys looking at me like, yeah, 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 <laughs> we'll see about that. So then we, we started collecting the data. And then I, I would say probably second week of preseason. Uh, and this is where coach also really helped me. He said to the guys like, hey, 
we've seen the data. We know that we need to take it easy on you guys today. So, you know, uh, today we're not going to do too much. And that moments like that really help. So uh, the players, I feel like after two weeks, they were just bought in. They, they actually, you know, I, uh, in my little office where I do, uh, where I got the setup, you know, the guys can walk in and they have a look and sometimes they see like, Ooh, Ooh, I had, uh, I had 750 and this guy only had 600. And so there's a little bit of a competition there every now and then, which is, which is pretty fun. Um, and in the beginning, it was a little bit of taking, of getting used to with, with putting the tags in and, and getting them out and not letting them get in the, in the washing machine and, and, and everything. But that was probably two or three weeks. Now it's, it's just routine. Yeah, that system down. So when you're, you know, you're looking at the metrics, you mentioned AAL, are there any others that stand out to you that you're like, we usually, like to, we on this podcast, we talk about the metrics trifecta. Like, do you have a top three? Like, um, so you, you know, you mentioned AAL, are there, you know, do you, are, do you have one or two others that, uh, that really uh, matter to you? Yeah, I, I would say it also depends. So uh, just on the performance side, so not the physio side of things, um, I have to say I like distance also uh, to get an idea about how how intense it was. Um, I'm a big fan of the change of direction. I, I, I like to see that sort the mechanical load side of things and then the change of direction. But one that that really stands out to me is also the top speed. I, I don't know why, but I, I just like top speed. I... I I know that um, yeah I know it's not maybe not the first thing coaches look into but I, I like top speed I know I, sometimes I just know we're doing a drill with a lot of up and down and I just like to see and sometimes we get a difference of of a guy running like thirty one kilometers per hour and and some other guy had like top speed like twenty two something like that so I'm like hmm what's what's up there why does this guy running and this guy not running and so something that's yeah, sometimes top speed is also uh, a nice value just to have a look at. Well, I'm sure the guys like to look at it too. You know, I mean, we we've, we've talked to some uh, American football coaches who, you know, here they they they've had guys clocked at 24 miles per hour, which is which is super super fast, for, you know, for running. And so obviously, then you know, it, it gives it it does it creates that competition, which again is is I mean, it, it's a healthy competition, would don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I have to say, uh, we have in our team, we have we have quite a, a couple of athletes who, who can really jump and really, get, you know, if they jump, they they hit the rim with their heads if they want. Uh, we also have a couple of guys who are not really jumpers, so comparing them and and then they see, say let's say like, hey, this guy was jumping like this high, and I'm I'm never jumping higher than this, and so it's it's it's. It can, it can be in a way maybe confronting, like they, they can really see like, hey, wow, this guy is really a lot faster and jumps a lot higher. But I feel like, you know, for us, um, if you see that, you know, then I just tell them like, hey, uh, we just have a conversation about it. And for us, with with the players we work with, most of them are experienced guys. They they actually laugh about it like, hey, uh, I uh, today, again, not too much in the red zone, while this guy is a lot in the red zone. And it's... But it's it's just a, a funny thing where it, it can help, I believe, in 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 motivating the guys, uh, and and that, that's that's a bit of healthy competition, which you always have in the locker room, which which is good. Yeah, that's that's good to hear, and we'll 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 start getting into some of the insights. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about is the crazy schedule that that you you guys have because you're bouncing between league games and then you've got cup games and and can you explain a little bit about that and then how you use the data do you approach you use the data kind of the same across the board for all of these different competitions or do you change things so talk give me a little bit of background first and everything you know all the all the games you're playing and then we'll talk a little bit about the data that you're using yeah, so we play in the league uh, together with the Belgium Belgium League, uh, and that means that the, the the way the league is set up is first we play a domestic round where we just play the other Dutch teams, and then we go cross border. So not, now we're playing the Belgium teams home and away, and then after that we have the playoffs. And in in between the the, the league we have the European uh, competition, and for us that started this year with a qualification tournament for the Champions League which we uh, we didn't win. So we we uh, played in the FIBO Europe Cup. Uh, so that means that we had, uh, especially October, November, December, we played 
on the Wednesdays, we played uh, FIBA Europe Cup. And then at the weekend, we played the domestic round. And uh, so that means uh, yeah, quite a lot of travel and uh, and for sure two games a week. Uh, yeah, it was actually only two games a week. A couple of years ago, we also had three sometimes, but this year was just two a week. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a quite a big difference between the FIBA Europe Cup game and some of the domestic games. So our approach uh, sometimes was a bit different. We, we knew like the, the highest moment of the week and the most intense moment of the week is gonna be the Wednesday. The, the Saturday league game is going to be a little bit less, and, and we you know, were in pretty good shape to win that game. Um, so we we needed to look at the week like, hey, we want to peak on the Wednesday. We also want to get get our reps in because we're still pretty early in the season. Um, so we we, we uh, coach and I we developed this week periodization, or actually the minus one, minus two, minus three, and then in all these days we know like how intense we can practice, but still be relatively like sharp and, and, and rested for the games. So if we would have like a FIBA Europe Cup game and we would uh, fly the day before we would arrive, we knew like, hey, we want to practice, but we don't want to go over this number to really make sure that we, you know, our legs are still fresh tomorrow. And we had moments in the year where we knew that we were playing a, a little bit of a lower uh, level uh, team on the Saturday or Sunday. And we knew like, hey, we, we still need to have a good practice. So sometimes in a, in a game like that, we would go a little bit higher. Of course, not crazy, but still a little bit higher. So we knew that we have a good practice stimulus. And we know it. You know, we knew it could cause a little bit of fatigue in the day after, but we accepted that like, okay, that's okay. Because we know after this game, we, we need to give the, the guys a day of rest. And then, you know, we're already going to fly back to or whatever. So that's that's been, a bit, it's been a puzzle, but... Um, that's that's also what makes it a lot of fun, I guess. Uh, like not because if, if sometimes we would have a week where we just have one game a week, and the guys, you know, we're gonna play on Sunday. The guys are gonna say on, on Wednesday, like it's only Wednesday. Like so many practices. So I, I actually like the two a week, and I know that most of the guys do it as well. Well, one of the things too that you know, speaking to other coaches, because it's it's just it's just different. You know, the the European game and and the games and the setup and. You know, and 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 the way you guys play, but you have to think about. Uh, one of the coaches told me that you know you have to think about your players who are underloaded, right? Guys who maybe aren't players, or you have a week like that where you know there's only one game, and the guys probably think they're going to have it easy that week. But it's it's maintaining that level of intensity for the entire week, and is that where you, you look at the data and say, okay, this is where we need to be because this is where we're going to be on Saturday or Sunday, or you know, or, or when our next game comes along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, this is where, so if we, with our normal roster, we're with 12 guys, but are actually 13 now, but this year we, we did not really have a normal year. We had quite a lot of injuries. So normally we would have a couple of young guys who were not really practicing a lot uh, and not really playing a lot. So, you know, we were already thinking about, Hey, those low minute guys, we need to give them an extra stimulus. So we try to do all of that with, with we got a second team playing at a, a, a lower level. And uh, so there were all sorts of ways to set that up and really make sure that these guys also get their reps in. But actually with the injuries, they just been practicing a lot because, you know, we, there were a lot of moments where we just were, we were with 10 guys, we were just with 11 guys. So we, we knew we, we just needed those, yeah, low minute guys as well. And then in the weekends, it's just a matter of seeing, like making sure that these two guys also get their reps in within games. So they, they played in the second team or sometimes they played in the first team as well. And But it's 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 really, uh, if you have a bigger roster and you really have like your go-to guys, you really got to make sure that the low minute guys also get their reps in because you know with a, with a season, we're going to have like a 60, sometimes 70 game uh, season, there's going to be injuries. So you know that if somebody gets gets hurt, they, these guys got to step up and they got to be ready. Well, and you know, the data provides that threshold. So you know where everybody needs to be, you know, at any given point, you know, throughout the season or throughout the week. And you mentioned the injuries. And so this is, this is what's so interesting about you because you're the strength and conditioning coach on one side, but then... You're also the physio guy dealing with the injuries and, and rehab and, 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 and return to play, getting guys back on the court. And I, I mean, I, I know you work with, with just, you know, general population, typical patients and, and things like that. So I'm really curious to, to find out how 
are you able to use the data in the return to play protocols? Yeah, that's 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 a good one right there because I feel like it's one of the major things to, that that the data can contribute contribute in. Um, if you then that goes for any anybody who has an injury, there's always a point like, hey, when do we start running again? When do we start touching the basketball again? When we're we gonna do this? When we're we gonna do that? And I feel like it's a bit of a a feeling a physio must have. It's a bit like, hey, I've seen this, so you must be ready to do this. But it's sort of like the art the art of the physio, maybe a little bit there. But I feel like the data just gives a, gives you way more uh, objectified like measurements. Like, hey, this guy is really ready because he showed that he can do this, this, and this. So, um, yeah, I can tell you how how the approach is when we we had an injury. So, for example, we had a guy. Um, he had a knee injury, and he was out for quite a while. And uh, when he came back, I knew his his data from previous pre before his injury, so I knew like, hey, if he wants, to, if he if he's coming back, he needs to be able to play 22 minutes. Uh, he needs to do X amount of distance, change of direction, jumps, and I just made a list. And then during the rehab, you know, once we were able to do to start some running, immediately I wanted to get him to really get get in, run a couple of kilometers. So okay, we want him to build that up. Then, okay, we're into change of direction. Okay, I need him to do X amount of changes of direction, first of all, in like a 90 degree angle. And after that, we changed it more to agility. So reacting to a stimulus and change of direction. But I would just really have this, this list with me, like, hey, this is what he needs to do come game day. So we really need to prepare him for it. And then I also knew like, hey, if, if we want, uh, want him back with the team, then we know like if he's doing the non-contact part with the team, which is usually the first step if you if you come back, we knew like that's uh, X amount of this, this, and this metric. So first of all, he needs to do that with me a couple of times. Knee should not react, knee should feel fine. If that's the case, okay, you're back with the team, partly with the team. Then once the, the guys are gonna have contact, you're back with me and we're gonna do some other stuff. And so in this, the data really helped me to really make sure that I was not not skipping steps and really making sure that we 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 checked all the boxes before he was back uh, with the guys. So having that data and then those insights that it's providing, it, it's I guess it kind of makes everybody feel a little more comfortable, right? When when somebody is sent back out there to play. Yeah, and, and that, that is where the I had a and I, it's it's unfortunate, but I have quite a lot of injury stories this year. But that's this the theme of this year, I guess. But uh, we had another guy with an, an injury and um, he's the quickest guy on our team. And he was, I knew that because I'm a top speed guy. <laughs> I like that. No, and, and and I was rehabbing him and I he had a soft tissue injury. So we knew like, hey, uh, like the max speed and the, the, the sprinting is going to be going to be important here. And I knew his numbers and I just said to him uh, one day we were doing stuff on the court and I just felt like, okay, we I knew from the other days, like how fast we went. I said, okay. Today, I don't want you to hold back and I just want you to go baseline to baseline or just before baseline. And he went and I said, like, was that all you got? Was that as fast as you get? I said, he said, yeah, maybe it was like 95%, but it felt like it was pretty good. So after the practice, I, I downloaded the data and I said, hey, hey, come here, have a look. What's your quickest sprint ever? It was way quicker than he was before and everything. And, and he said, yeah, I feel, I feel strong. I feel powerful. So... Uh, so that was a pretty cool moment. So that when I saw that, I said to him like, "Hey, you know, you're you're good. You know, we we got to take the next step now. This this is really, uh, it's really, you know, the body is just ready now." So what do you think was the difference leading up to that? Was it everything you were doing uh, ahead of that before you put them, you know, kind of through that final test? Was it was it checking the data every day and just adding things, you know, in in that return to play and just keep working towards it? Was that the difference? I guess I guess it helped. I guess it helped. So it would normally, if you don't have the data, you you you, you make the same steps uh, in in the rehab process, but now it's just, you know, it's just you got uh, you really got the numbers, so you're just more sure to do it. So every time we were ready, I, I I downloaded the data and I looked at it, and I I was sometimes I was happy, sometimes I was like, hmm, in my feeling we we were going a little bit quicker. So I knew like, hey, I need to find. I need to find a little bit more speed next time. So change the drill, change it a little bit. 
And uh, no, but for sure, for sure, data helps with, especially with the feedback. So sometimes you just see a guy and you know, like, hey, this guy is quick and this is this is a high jumper and and all of that. But then just having the data and really seeing like, hey, he, he, he can jump this high and now he's jumping this high. Sometimes that's that's something you cannot see with the naked eye. So you really need the data to, to, to help you with that. Are you seeing a difference now? And this is just just me thinking crazy here but you know like back when i was playing and you know it, it was you, you sprained your ankle it was going to be four to six weeks that was that do you see a shift in that maybe where okay everybody's everybody's different everybody's an individual you have your return to play protocol okay here he you know he has a sprained ankle she has a sprained ankle but you know what the the timetable maybe may be different for both of them based on what we can put together here is that where we're is are we starting to lean that way with now that we have data behind some of these decisions yeah i feel like it can so th th there is of course it depends on what type of injury you have but there's always just tissue repair and that just takes time so there's there's you always got the like the the, the, the sort of like window where you can work in and uh, but I feel like you know, sometimes you can you can just go a little bit quicker through the steps because you you really have like numbers that hey he's he's doing this well he's doing this well. Uh, but also I think you should never just just lead you. Uh, the the data is is an important factor, but there's of course a lot more. And I feel from my experience with working with professional athletes, uh, combine com compare that to like regular patients. They're just different bodies, you know. They just heal quick. They they just they just know what to do with their body, and you know, and it's their job. So they that that sprained ankle that gets attention 24, 24 seven. Then I just give them a program. They do it. We go on the court together, and then if we see the data, if I see the way he moves, you know, I, I don't see anything weird. The guy is saying, "Hey, my ankle is pretty fine." Then okay, let's let's skip a step. Let's let's go. Let's go, and and then you can speed up the process for sure. Were, were those, uh, I always like to, to ask about aha moments. And those, those are some great aha moments, especially, you know, when, when he when he sprints and he's, yeah, I think I was like 95%. And you're like, actually, it was the fastest you've ever run. Like, was are those, are, are there any other, you know, was there a, an aha moment even before that where you, you know, it was data-based, where, where you looked at it? Because that's a great example of of data just you know kind of having your back right as a, as a coach it's never going to replace you because you know you you have to have those conversations with with the athlete you know but but are there any other moments like that that you can think of or is that because to me that's a great one but you know are, are there those moments or do they just happen like on a regular basis uh this was for sure one of those moments yeah that, that was and i think the best one but i i would say uh, when I was working with an injured guy for the first time, really using the data, it was also a moment for me where I, I felt like I just, I, I just knew like, like what I just said, like I got the list that the first time I got that sort of list to me, it was more like, Hey, this right now, it feels like I know, I know what, what I need to, to make sure that this guy can do again. So I would say in a way that was an aha moment as well, because I just, I had it written down and of course it's it's just the change of direction, just the jumps and basketball is a lot more and there's contact and all of that. But just knowing like, hey, I got a hard like list here where I know like, hey, I need to check these off. That was for sure one of those moments. And I was doing uh, some change of direction work with a guy who had an ankle sprain and I was letting him make cuts in 90 degrees and then a little bit more and a little bit more intense and left right and i just felt so confident that i was doing the right thing because i knew like hey we need to build him up towards you know him being able to do this and then of course there's there's like the the physio other stuff you do with then but that, that was that was a, a pretty cool moment to to realize that that's awesome you know and now let's you know we the, everything kind of blends in and you know i know we always say we talk data insights actions but everything you know does kind of meld together but but i want to i wanted to ask you about some of the some of the things that you may have changed over the years one of the, i saw a great quote from you where you say you think it's important to find the right solution together with the patient or the player and so we're hearing a lot of that and so you know when, when it comes to the to the action part of it whether it's you know, in the weight room or, or out on the court, like, are there things you have kind of changed and, and, and shifted as far as like exercises or drills, you know, since you started using the data? Yes. Yeah. Since I started using the data, it's, it's complicated because it's only a year, but, but I would have to say, I, 
I feel like last couple of years, there's, there's a lot of things that I changed. Like in the beginning, I came into the team and I figured like, hey, I'm going to make sure that these guys are going to jump higher. I'm going to make sure that the, these guys are going to get stronger. And then, you know, you see the schedule, you're like, hmm, there's only like X amount of stress we can give to the body, like, and before it's going to hurt. And so it changed a lot more to first, uh, I needed to get them bigger, faster, stronger to I just need them available for coach. So let's just make sure that we're trying to get them through the season and and not lose too many uh, kilos of of, 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 of of muscles. So there's been some changes like that for sure. Uh, I also feel like working with professional athletes, uh, like especially the like late 20, early 30 year old guys I work with, like who am I to think that I know their body? Like I just met them. So for me to work with them and if they tell me like hey i like to do exercises like this then i'm just gonna say okay let's go let's go and then if i see something either from the data that i collect or just from like my experience i'm gonna say hey maybe we need to mix in a little bit of this and i feel like the the guys they they respect that they like it and you know if i give if if i give them a little bit like hey you want to do this okay and then i say we need let's do a little bit of this then we always come to these uh, combinations where we, we both like it so and that's that's definitely a change to in the beginning you're like hey we need to do this i need to do this 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 and then the, the guys are going to get a lot better it's it's way more complicated than that so that's that was for me a huge uh, thing to learn and and i'm happy that i sort of found found that now hey, so i'm wondering has is anybody jumping higher is anybody have you have you gotten some inches? Anybody dunking got, that wasn't done before? I got, I got before? the data now, so I'm, I'm yeah for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that, so yeah, no, nah, uh, it's 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 tough with the, with a the schedule we have. I feel like the the metrics of both jumping higher, faster. Let, let's just make sure that we we win the the league, and we do that with as much healthy guys as possible. And then and then I'm very very happy. Well, that's what I keep. You know, I mean, this is a tool. This is never going to replace coaching and that that human aspect and that personal aspect that coach player relationship and it really sounds like you've, you've kind of mastered that using this as a tool and you you have it in your toolbox and you use it to you know just to kind of help guide decision making both you and coach yeah but i i for sure haven't mastered it but i i, I try and i i uh, i think it's it's as you said it's a tool and it's an important tool and it, it really helps us and it, it really, I think, you know, the way, what I said earlier, like the way we look at a week now, like today we need to do this, we need to do that, that that just, that alone helped us so much that we just got a good understanding of how much we can ask during a week that we still get the guys in a good shape to win a game. But also, you know, coach just wants, wants reps, coach wants the guys on the court, wants to, to, to train intense and wants to, so I feel like we sort of like found that, that sweet spot now there. And uh, I think that really helped us. And um, yeah, that's, 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 I think, the most important thing for us right now. That's awesome. Now, I know it's only been a year, but I'm curious. Are there ever days where you're going, boy, I wish I, wish I had that? Is there anything that's still missing? If the answer is no, you haven't found anything yet, I mean, that's great. But, but I always like to ask this question because I'm always curious if, if there's anything that, that you're coming across that you're like, boy, oh boy, we're just missing that one little thing, whether it's from the data or you know the, the system itself, whatever. Is there anything missing? Um, you know, the, the thing that is missing, and that's more the problem uh, I have now, uh, especially this year, is I wish I had more time because I feel like there's so much, there's so much data. So I feel like I, it, it just takes more time to really use everything the system has. So maybe just uh, like there are some steps that if they would be quicker or if they would be, then then it maybe could help. But it's it's also I think a process. It's it's only been a year now, so I feel like I'm I'm pretty used to the way everything works, and I'm, I know what I'm looking for. But just having the time to really make deep dives, really get into the data, and and I feel like this summer is going to be huge in that. Uh, Coach and I already talked about you know certain moments in the season where we really want to have a deeper dive into like hey what what did we do there? Why did we do it there? How can we change it next year? Uh, so. Yeah, time, time. It's always time, but it's. I feel like the system itself it has a lot, uh, and I would say I'm. I'm. I talk to Miki quite a lot, uh, one of your colleagues, 
Yeah. And um, if I don't understand anything, he'll, he'll help me. And usually if he shows it, it's pretty easy. Well, that's the beauty. I mean, because we have guys that really know what they're, you know, what they're doing and they, and you're never alone. You always have, you have somebody to lean on. And so, so that's, that's just, that's awesome to hear. And you know, like, this has been so insightful and I'm just, you know, be, before we cut you loose, I'm just curious, is there anything else you wanted to, that, that something that I didn't ask about or anything else you want to uh, throw in for us that, uh, that maybe we didn't talk about because man, this is, this has been so great. And it's so interesting because, you know, not only are you, are you trying to help her, you know, performance, but you're also, you have the return to play and the, to have both sides of that insight was, was phenomenal. Is there anything else that I missed? Um, yeah, I got, I'm actually thinking about your last question again, like, what, what do I want to see? And I'm thinking, and I know that this is impossible, but you know, the, the way our season is going this year, but also I see it in, in all the leagues, like there's so many guys injured and I feel like if there would be a way to like more like predict injuries. And I, I know that this is something that we've been, we, as everybody who works in sports, but also all science, scientists, uh, the, all sports scientists, like, how can we predict injury? How can we prevent it? Like, I would really like it if, if data would be, like, better in sort of, like, recognizing when a guy is is, is going to get injured. And I know this, I'm probably asking way too much, but it's, you know, I just hate to see so many good players not able to play. And not just on our team uh, this year, but also in every league. Every league that you that you watch, there's always guys injured. And I feel like it's only getting more and more. Uh, so yeah, I would say if, if Kinexon would just crack that code, then I would be very happy, man. Well, we're, we're working on it. I promise you. But, uh, you know, we are, we are seeing advancements in that player ability, availability going up for teams and, and, and different, but it just takes a little bit of time. Kind of like what you were talking about, that sweet spot, you know, after, you know, you get a year or two and you start adjusting things. And that's when I think, you know, coaches start seeing some success. Rick, this has been great. Now I'm just curious, like if, if if you don't mind, if there's somebody who who hears this and wants to maybe reach out to you to find out how you're doing the data, what's an easy way for somebody to get a hold of you? Um, I'm I'm not really a social media guy anymore. I, I so uh, that's a bit more complicated. Uh, I haven't been logged in uh, all my social media for a couple of months now. So I, I would say uh, maybe LinkedIn. Because okay. if somebody sends me a message through LinkedIn, I get an email. So then I know like, hey, somebody wants to talk to me. And I have to say, I would like it. I would like to. I, I'm really somebody who likes to talk to other coaches. And so if there's anybody who does, um, who wants to talk about this stuff, then please reach out because I, I like that stuff. That is awesome. Rick, I can't thank you enough for, for coming on today and, and sharing your insights. And we need to revisit you in like a year or so, maybe even six months to find out how how things are going. I'd be very curious to find like how you adjust things, you know, especially, you know, in the re return to play side too. It sounds like, man, it sounds like you're doing some really good things on the return to play side, man. I, it, it's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's unfortunate that it's necessary because we would love to not do it, but the, the, the return to play is, it's pretty cool. And it's cool to see the guys come back and, and have an impact on the game and, and help us win games. That's, that's pretty cool. Well, I appreciate it, Rick. And for you, I call that job security, man. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Rick. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, you're welcome. All right, hey, if you know a great coach like Rick, who's doing great things, winning games and doing it with sports data and analytics, we'd love to hear about him. We'd also like to make him a future guest on the podcast. You can reach out to us on Twitter and Instagram at Connexon Sports or look for us on LinkedIn as well. When you're looking for Rick, look for us at Connexon Sports and media. Remember, we want you to innovate the game by collecting data, getting those insights, and turning those insights into action. We will see you next time.